Today I'm going to show you how new houses are built in the UK in 2017-2018. Welcome back. If you're a regular viewer, you'll already know that I'm from the wonderful city of Newcastle upon Tyne in the UK. Newcastle is in the north of England and I happen to live on one of the biggest building sites in the country at the moment known as Newcastle Great Park. This development will eventually have over 4,000 brand new homes mostly built by Taylor Wimpy and Persimmon. They're two of the biggest house builders in the UK at the minute. So it gives a very typical view of how houses are built now in December 2017. So whether you're in the UK and you're thinking of buying a new build or perhaps you work on one of these developments, or as is more likely the case, because most of me viewers aren't from the UK, you're from elsewhere in the world and you might just find this interesting to see how UK houses are built. I might do another video at some point explaining the pros and cons of new build homes because I know these houses intimately now from the amount of remedial work that I've done in them. But today I'm going to show you most of the stuff involved in the external side of the build just from a very very high level just to give you an idea of how things are done. So essentially I'm just going to show you everything up to the building becoming watertight at the minute. So kind of the structure of the building. And then when I get a chance I'll do a bit of a part two and I'll give you a tour of inside a new build so you can see how stuff is done internally as well. So let's go and have a bit of a look around. So we've got a whole range of properties here ranging from ground floor level right up to second floor level. So I thought I would show you a few different construction techniques that are getting used here for building these. So I think the most interesting thing first of all is that they're using a concrete slab floor technique on almost all of these new builds which it's not great really. It would be much better to see block and beam used but I guess this is used for quickness and cheapness but you can see all of the new builds around here are using just a concrete slab for the floor. It is basically I presume just the quickest and cheapest way of putting the floor in. The problem with concrete slab floors is that the concrete can start to sink after a while and you can start to get problems with gaps appearing and stuff in the floor. Plus there's slight concerns over the thermal properties of concrete and how much cold you're going to get coming through the floor. So you can see all these bags that are put in to the properties while they're getting built. These are bags are just in case anyone falls during the build so that there's a, a soft cushion to fall on. So you'll see all the new builds have these bags in them during the construction phase. And it's just a health and safety thing. And they get removed as each floor gets completed. Try to take you around this side, you might be able to see a bit better. So you can see we've got a mixture of block work and brick being used on the outer leaf of these houses. So wherever you see the block work, that's probably where it's going to get rendered. Because obviously it's cheaper and quicker to put blocks up than it is to do bricks. So the, the bricks that you see are the facing bricks, that, that's a final finish for the house. And the block work will probably get a coat of render over it. Or um, sometimes some sort of cladding will be put over it as well. So that's a house there uh, done up to first floor level. I'm not going to talk about all the drainage infrastructure and stuff like that. It's not very interesting. I'm just talking kind of from foundations upwards here. Steel lintels above the doors and windows and the block work cemented around that. These are the lightweight blocks that get used for the inner leaf predominantly. The windows and doors get framed out with these during the construction phase. So what you can see here in these houses, you can see the outer leaf of brick and the inner leaf of block with the cavity in between. And what typically happens is that the insulation gets pumped into the cavity afterwards. What they'll sometimes do, I can't see any around here, but what you'll sometimes see is bricks missing halfway up the property and they're normally left out to leave a hole where the insulation's pumped in and then the bricks are put in afterwards. 
You can actually see on this one, I don't know if you can make out, but they've used two different types of block in the construction of this. So they've got the lightweight blocks on what looks like the outer walls and then they've got the heavier, denser block for the inner walls. That's probably just for soundproofing because that'll be two separate houses there. That looks like two front doors built into that property. So they've probably used the higher density blocks between the two for better sound insulation between the two properties. So I don't know if you can see that there. The, the lighter coloured white blocks, they're the low density ultra ultra light blocks are awful things for attaching anything into. They just don't take any weight. They're so, they're so soft. And then in that middle kind of partition there between those two front doors, you've got the higher density blocks. So you can see this house is just getting up to uh, kind of first floor level and they've just, the brickies have started doing that outer edge on the right hand side to take it up another, what is it, seven or eight courses there. Again, we've got a mixture of brick and block on the outer leaf there. Again, just where it'll be ultimately rendered or, or panelled on the outside. So we'll have a look up a level now. This is very common where you'll get sort of three or four houses and they're all at slightly different levels. We've got one just getting past first floor. One is pretty much halfway through first floor. And then the next one along there, the second floor is almost completing up to roof level. So again, in this property here, where you can see the ground floor is done, and the halfway through the first floor, you can see all those fall protectors in the property, kind of down at the bottom there, if you can see them. And then this one, at the end here, is pretty much ready for the roof. I'll try and show you that. So you can see, once it's ready at roof level, they've got all the tiles ready down the bottom there ready to go on, they're just waiting for the uh, for the timber to arrive for those roofs I think. It looks like both of those houses are now ready for roofs. So obviously the roof structure will get craned in so they probably want to minimise the amount of times they're going to have to hire a crane so we'll do those two houses at the same time. So probably once they get these two houses here done the brickies will have this up to roof height and then they can get that one done and then probably get that end one done as well. And it saves hiring a crane four times, basically, that can probably get the whole roof of all of these four houses. Is it four houses, I think? All done in one go. So I've just come round the side of this one, and you can see formers in for that window there on the right-hand side. They've got nothing in for the door, so you can really see the cavity of the door there. If you can see it. So you can see the cavity between the outer and inner, inner blocks, outer bricks, and that'll be pumped full of insulation afterwards. Again, concrete floor slab throughout. So I don't know if you can see as well, we've got engineered timber joists there. They're basically softwood on the top and bottom with an OSB sheet in between. They're very lightweight, very rigid. They're not susceptible to bending and twisting like you get with normal solid wood joists. So I don't know, jury's out for me. Um, I do get a little bit nervous when I see a lot of the OSB getting cut away to allow for services to go through and stuff. But apparently that's the in thing for joists these days is these engineered joists. You can see as well here, this is really common where there's bits of cement all over the outside of the house. That'll get pressure washed off once the whole house is finished. That's just where the scaffolding level's been up to and obviously cement's fallen down. It's quite common. Generally doesn't leave a mark once it's pressure washed off. So these holes here that have been left in the outer leaf are probably for service panels for like gas and electric and stuff like that. You can see they've got some sort of insulation material behind it. Um, and then presumably you've got the inner leaf behind that. It's hard to tell from here, but I'm assuming that that's what that's for. Right, I've had to come round the corner a bit just to show you the roof structure once that's going on. So you can kind of just see, I can't get close enough to actually show you. It's sod's law at the minute. There's no houses that I can get near where you can see the roof structure. Let's, I'll try and go around the other side. 
Uh, here's some finished houses, by the way. They all look pretty much done and dusted. You can see the render that's been used over the block work on those. You can see the block work all the way around the outside of this particular one. Engineered bricks at the bottom, up to damp proof level. So the damp proof, I think, is right in between those yellow bricks and the block work above. I think medium or high density blocks on the outside. Low density in the inside leaf, you can see the white blocks. Just through the door there, you can just see them. And actually, some nice, what looks like a kind of sandstone window detail around this one, which is quite a nice feature, I suppose. Right, here we go. You can see a bit better the engineered roof structure that we've got here. So these are all pre-assembled and come on the back of a big truck and literally just get craned straight onto the roof. And then once all that's in place, there's a layer of waterproofing material goes over the top of that. And then on top of that go the battens that hold the roof tiles in place. And that is essentially it. You know, there's not much more to it than that. Concrete base, brick and block construction, engineered floor joists, pre-built softwood roof structure, and then the tiles on top of that. And again, you can just see those are getting more... Well, the one next to it has got the tiles on. The one next to that has got tiles on. The one next to it is just waiting for its tiles. So they're almost all weather tight. You can just see as well on this one, the window's starting to go in as well. A bit of render. Obviously all the guttering and internal services go in. Absolute building site over here. Over here, completed houses with people living in them. So I don't know if that's the same worldwide, but there's very little division between the houses that are under construction and the building site and the houses that are all finished. Needless to say, the roads and paths are the last thing to get done once the houses are completely finished. So it'll be a mess like this for quite a while because they've got all these houses down this end to get finished. At the minute, the paths just have kind of the, what gets known as like the undercoat layer or the, the base layer, but that'll still have 20 mil of final coat put over it once it's all done and dusted. So I've just come round another section of the development here. You can actually see the timber roof structure sitting on the ground there, ready to go up. Although there's no houses here that are anywhere near ready for the roof yet, so that seems a little bit early for the roof to be coming but that'll be sitting there and snow and rain and all sorts so when we talk about houses contracting and drying out new build houses drying out that's why all that timber that'll become the roof of one of these properties and that'll be sitting there for oh i would say a good couple of weeks maybe maybe what maybe two or three more weeks maybe more before these houses are ready for a roof. There's nothing else here that's anywhere near ready for roof level stuff. So if it rains a lot, I mean, it's dry at the minute, and very cold. If anything, it's more likely to snow. But if it does rain a lot, those timbers are gonna get absolutely soaked. And it's a drying out process of that sort of thing that causes all your shrinkage and cracking in new houses. It's par for the course, it's normal, every house goes through that really. And again, just over on this side you can see all the block work ready to be installed, but this is just a site compound for this particular part of the development. This is a brand new section, which I think this is going to have another 800 houses in, off the top of my head. So another huge section of the estate here. They'll have this built in, what? two years or something, I'll come back here and it'll be full of houses. If I just turn round you can see nice sunset at the minute, but you can see the rest of this development all around this side is all completely finished. Last little bit of site compound left over there, 
but this side of the development looks done. Another thing that you'll notice on new builds, which you probably won't see as much of on older properties, but you'll see there's no soil pipes or vent stacks on the outside of the property. The only pipes that you tend to get on the outside are the rainwater down pipes. All of your soil stack and that sort of thing runs internally inside the house. We've just got things like the, uh, the rainwater down pipe running down the front in the middle of that. But that's quite a nice feature of new builds, is that you don't have as much pipe work running on the outside of the property. So there you go, hopefully you found that interesting. I would love to hear how new build houses are built in your part of the world, wherever you are. Pop it in the comments below and let everyone know. This is a big one for the comments because I would love to hear your take on things if you're involved in the design or the construction process of new build houses. I think it's really, really interesting how these are put together. I would love to know a little bit more about some of the design decisions that go into new builds because there's a lot of stuff that is far from perfect. Is what I've shown you fairly typical? What do you think could be done to improve the standard of construction in the UK? And if you're in a new build home, how have you found it? Go on, pop it in the comments. So keep the comments nice, folks. I'll just delete anything nasty that you put up there. Bearing in mind, we're talking about people's homes here. You wouldn't want the entire internet slagging off where you live. Keep it constructive, keep it interesting, keep it informative. Having said that, I'm well aware I can't put the genie back in the bottle. So don't forget to hit subscribe, come back for part two, and I'll show you around the insides of some new builds. For now, thank you for watching again. See you next time. Tatty bye.